Slytherin. Made it to the best house, my house. In my best friend's house. So you may be wondering, why do you have so much Slytherin pride? They're evil. Listen. Even though they're treated like a villain breeding ground in the stories, Slytherin is not inherently bad or evil. Their values are not evil, genocide, world domination. <laughs> Their values are ambition, resourcefulness, and leadership. They'll gravitate towards people or experiences that are powerful or that make them feel powerful. They're motivated by intense passion to reach their goals, loyalty to themselves, and fierce dedication to their special chosen loved ones. I've read some excellent theory by fans on the internet that I'll link below that says we each have a primary and secondary house. We all have all the houses inside of us, but we have two that dominate. Your primary house tells you why you do things. Your secondary house tells you how you do things. For example, if you know me, you might be confused as to why I'm a Slytherin. Growing up, I always thought I was a Ravenclaw, and you might have assumed that too. But I took the sorting quiz done by JK Rowling and I got Slytherin and it actually makes a lot of sense because I'm not solely motivated by learning or expressing creativity. In fact, if there is a subject that I'm not interested in, I won't go near it. If there's an art project that isn't challenging enough or that I'm not passionate about, it is nearly impossible to do. I also don't really care to learn things unless I can use that information in some way, either for self-empowerment or using it creatively. So I'm motivated by Slytherin values, self-empowerment, passion, but I pursue those things in Ravenclaw ways, through learning and creativity. If it's still all confusing and you can't decide, I recommend the quiz by JK herself. It showed me the light. And anyway, after that tangent, this is the makeup I created. It's obviously centered around the tattoos because my biggest inspiration for this was Host Azkaban Sirius Black with his runic chest tattoos. And his wand has runic or something carvings on it as well. It's my fave. So these that I used are not runes, they're astrological symbols, which you may have seen already. But that's what I'm familiar with. So after that, I designed the makeup to be clean, sharp. I just had to use this green lipstick because it matches my dress perfectly. And then I added these false eyes inspired by buckeye butterfly wings because it added a bit of interest to the face and because it's an example of clever self-preservation, which is very much a Slytherin ideal. So now I'm going to explain the tattoos. Fair warning, this is going to be very geeky, probably rambly, but I figured you might want to know. And feel free to stop watching now. If you do stop now, thank you so much for following this series. I've had so much fun and I can't wait to make new videos for Halloween in the next couple of weeks. So, tattoos. I started with the hand which obviously is a symbol of action, power, creativity. Uh, but I couldn't really get a starting point, so I looked up what the traditional meaning of different parts of the hand were. And I found that Mercury rules the pinky, the Sun rules the ring finger, Saturn rules the middle finger, and Jupiter rules the pointer finger. And it was the craziest coincidence because it just so happens that those are my four strongest planets in my birth chart. I was blown away. I was totally blown away. So obviously after I figured that out, I knew that it was meant to be. I was on the right track, so I kept going. And then the rest of these symbols just tell how the pla these planets interact in my chart. So I guess it's kind of like the story of my inner power or whatever. I don't know if this is already not making sense, but it just all connected and it just was super cool to me. This hand 
is just a picture of the stars in the sky when I was born. And guess what? This one? Sirius. The chest is the same thing, but continued. But the chest has associations with the heart and passion and the soul or whatever. So I chose to describe how my Moon, Venus, and Mars interact here and include any other aspects or patterns or anything that involve my passion or my destiny. It makes sense to me. So basically it's like I pulled out what I felt were the most powerful parts of my chart and remapped them in a way that if I were a wizard might help me to tap into some inner power or something like that. I don't know, you know, super lame, but fun. And I won't go into more detail than that because it gets really complicated. But if you are into birth charts and you want to chat about birth charts, go ahead because that's like my favorite hobby. So that's a wrap. I can't believe they're all done now. I had so much fun, like I said before. This, I think, is my favorite thing I've done so far. Just because I was able to take something that I've loved for so long and kind of get re-inspired by it and create something a little whimsical, a little magical, a little weird. Not that weird. So I hope you enjoyed it. The biggest thing I learned from this, I think, is how exhausting it is to do all of these things in one day. Like creative direction, the makeup art, the styling, the modeling, the videography, and the photography, which I really tried to step up this time. I'd never done a project with all of those things at once. I usually save my special photography for things that I don't do on camera, or I do on camera the looks that maybe aren't as complex or in need of cool photographic styling, you know. But this time I did all of it and it's exhausting. I see now why these jobs usually go to like 100 different people. But at the end of the day, this has been a great exhaustion because I get to produce body of work for each house that I'm really happy with and then all together I get to look at it and see the steps that I've taken to grow and learn, eh, you know, but, but really that is what makes any obstacle worth it to me, is I can be proud of this set of things. And am I crazy that I continually keep ramping up the scale of these projects because, well just because, is that crazy? I think, maybe, probably. But I'm gonna keep trying to get better and better. You know, there's no other, no other, no other way. And even though I've already said it, I'll say it again. Thank you, thank you for watching this and enjoying it. If you did, if you haven't seen the photography aspect to it, it that's up on my Instagram, which is linked. And get ready for Zodiac Two, which is only gonna be on Instagram. It's just gonna be the photography. And. And in two weeks, I'll have some more Halloween videos starting here on this channel. And honestly, I love it. This time of year, it's just like Halloween, Christmas. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just, a, it's really just those two things, but I started celebrating Halloween in like July. So, so goodbye and see you soon. The end. See you soon. Tom Riddle. I am Lord Voldemort. <laughs> Prisoner of Azkaban. My favorite one. It's the darkest one. Well, it's the darkest visually. And they travel in time. And Sirius Black. Mm -hmm. And Lupin. I love Lupin. So... I guess I need a blooper reel because I've said like 10,000 things that don't even make sense. Oh, it was a cool earring thing that I threw together. Didn't throw it together. I was just playing around trying to make some interesting, like, kind of quirky jewelry out of the jewelry that I have. Because, you know, 
Witches and wizards wouldn't wear what we wear or how we wear it, you know? I feel like the movie's really messed up. They could have totally capitalized on some weird stuff, some cool weird stuff. But they didn't. And they didn't even let them wear their robes. They just let, ended up letting them wear mobile clothes the whole series. And I'm like, it was lacking in the creativity. So that's another reason why for this series, I tried to do like pretty glam looks, but then like add little eccentric elements to make it whimsical or a bit strange. So like if I were in living in the wizarding world, this might be the type of outfit I would wear every day. This might be, you know, this might be my style. It would just be different. It wouldn't... So that's why... That's another reason why this was fun. Because you get to reimagine little areas where Hollywood kind of down to the creativity. You know what I mean?